Liz Wiseman, author of The Impact Players, How to Take the Lead, Play Bigger, and Multiply Your Impact. Liz Wiseman, former global leader of human resource development at Oracle and now CEO of the Wiseman Group, was named one of the world's top 50 management thinkers in 2019, utilizing her research on leadership, development, and serving clients including Apple and Facebook. In her research, she's found that certain people have a knack for making themselves more valuable and influential in their work, and she calls them impact player. She has done a lot of research in the area of leadership and group intelligence, and in this book her research team talked to 170 well-known business leaders, asking them to list the top players, general players, and those who contributed well below the norm, and to describe their behavior and mindset. Then she talked to 25 high-impact players to find out what they think and what they do that is valuable and impactful. In the end, she concludes that there are 5 mindsets and 15 habits of high-impact players that we should learn from. This book is perfect for ambitious, motivated workers and leaders who want to be more successful in the workplace and make a bigger impact. Do you have someone around you who seems to make all the work and challenges seem less difficult when he's around? He can anticipate any crisis, get the job done and do more at the same time, sometimes leading the way, sometimes stepping back to take on the next challenge with his partner. Perhaps he is one of the impact player in this book. The most effective way to build influence in the workplace is not to learn from your co-workers and friends, but to think directly from your supervisor's point of view and do the things that make a difference in their mind. The 5 Influence Mindsets Two equal people in the workplace are both talented and motivated, but there is a huge difference in their influence at work. However, not everyone understands the reason for this gap. What kind of mentality and behavior makes people with the same talent perform differently? Whenever this topic comes up, I always hear people categorize this difference as flattering and diplomatic. This is a rather cynical way of looking at what they want to criticize, while ignoring what these people actually do and what they think behind the scenes. The author's research team asked each leader to select three people from their team. These three individuals had to be equal in intelligence and ability, but they were ranked by their level of contribution. The first person was the member of the team who demonstrated exceptional value and made above average contributions. The second person is the one who contributes at a general level that matches their ability. The third person is the one who contributes below their ability. The leader describes the behavior and mentality of these people. How do they see their work? What will they do? What won't they do? Why is their work valuable? The purpose of the study was to find out what distinguishes the best players from others, and what are the mindsets that keep smart and capable people from contributing to their full potential. Finally, the researchers identified five influencing habits that contribute to differences in contribution. Make yourself useful. The general players do what he or she has to do, while impact players do what he or she needs to do. Impact players understand the rules of the game. They know that the organization's operations and environment are fast-moving and complex, and they often need to adapt to changes. They see opportunities to make themselves useful. While others do their own thing, impact players do what's needed. Step up and step back. When you hit a gray area where no one is in charge, everyone else backs off, but impact players step up to lead. They know that in order for a team to achieve its goals, it has to overcome the gray areas in addition to its own work. After the completion of a milestone task, they will not relinquish power, but rather transfer it to the next member who has the ability to contribute. Persistence Even when the task becomes difficult and there are many unexpected obstacles, impact players insist on completing the whole thing. They take the initiative to take responsibility, solve problems, and get things done without supervision. While others push the problem to the top, impact players keep moving forward and get stronger along the way. Seek feedback and make adjustment. In a changing workplace, the key advantage is no longer what workers specialize in, but how quickly they adapt and learn. They like to think of new rules and goals as opportunities to learn and grow. In contrast, 
the general players see change as disruptive, unfair, or a threat to stability, and prefers to do things according to the rules they are good at. Impact players learn and adapt to change as others seek to minimize it. Make work easier. As teams face higher pressures and endless demands, impact players try to make difficult tasks easier. Instead of taking the work upon themselves, they work to improve the environment, systems, communication, and collaboration to make it easier for team members to help each other and make the work easier. Impact players make heavy workloads easier when others are burdening their supervisors with work stress. Impact player vs general player There are two types of employees cited in the book, one is an impact player and the other is a general player. We can learn from the impact player's way of doing things and see if our attitude is the same as the general player's. Simply put, the impact player is the one you call your supervisor. To put it simply, if you ask him to buy coffee from 7 to 11, some people will help you to get sugar and milk balls separately, while some people only have coffee, although it is only a small difference, it accumulates in many things, and the way of doing things on one side is a lot more careful. Impact Player Just like a star player in a soccer team, Impact Player will always lead the team to win at critical moments, and when you need to pass the ball, he will always appear in that position. There are similar members in the work team, who will reduce the burden of supervisors and co-workers to make the work smoother, and almost do not have to care about him after delivering the tasks, and he will complete the work smoothly, and will solve the problems by himself and will not forget to report back to let his supervisor. He won't forget to report back and let his supervisor know the progress, and just wait for him to finish the job when it's handed over to him. Do what is needed. The author provides his own experience that what an employee wants to do is not necessarily what the supervisor needs at the moment. Generally, employees only want to do what they want to do, an impact player will put aside what they want to do first and go ahead and accomplish what the supervisor needs to do first, to seek feedback and adjust their approach. Seek feedback and adjust practices. Many people avoid work they don't like, but impact players see this as a challenge to step out of their comfort zone. Often, we are afraid of being criticized, so we don't like to be criticized. Impact player proactively seek feedback and absorb the experience, adjusting their own working methods, which is called growth mindset, and consider criticisms as suggestions to help them correct their trajectory. We'll do more. Work is done as long as it is done, but impact player will do a little more to reduce other people's workload. There is an example in the book where a supervisor asked a subordinate to organize a form to get the key statistics, and the general staff only finished the form and handed it to the supervisor so the supervisor had to read the form himself after receiving the information and then make a summary. Directly tell your supervisor the key points of the statistics, and then attach the supporting tables. The general employee The general employee is not just a mediocre employee, they are just as good and conscientious employees, but the difference in mentality between them and their impact player makes them general. Unable to adapt Nowadays, Society is changing rapidly, but these people are still doing things the same way, so it is easy for them to complete the task without achieving the expected results. It can be said that the customer's needs have changed during the execution of the task, but the employees do not keep up with the changes in customer needs, and they only complete the task according to the original method, and the result is that it does not meet the customer's requirements, and the completed work is unimportant. It is probably a long-term task to the staff, he will be according to the supervisor accounted for the completion of the work on schedule, in the middle of the long-term goal does not care about changes, the mind is that I do my own work is good, the work is finally completed, but the supervisor needs to invest in the adjustment of the resources, and the cost of human resources. Impact player are committed to their work because they believe they can make a difference. Understand the rules of the game. To maximize value in an organization, to deliver services, we need to know what is most valued. We must understand the rules of the game. How well do you know the most appreciated skills and competencies in your organization? What are the priorities of the organization? What needs to be noticed and managed? 
What do your leaders, customers, and partners value? George Martin, the legendary record producer behind the Beatles, says, Most artists don't listen to the whole record when they record it. When the music is playing, they only listen to their part. Producers have to sit back and look at the whole thing from a bigger viewpoint to understand it. An impact player is someone who thinks from the point of view of a music producer, not an independent musician. The most influential professionals are thinkers first, then doers. A young soccer coach once told me that the best players don't see with their feet, they open their eyes and see what's happening on the field. If you work for a corporation, you've probably come to understand its business model, how money is made. For non-profit organizations, this may involve results that attract donations. Whether you work in a corporate or public organization, in development or sales, you should have a broad understanding of what your organization does and how it succeeds. When you've identified the underlying problems to be solved, you'll know how your work relates to the organization, and you'll see opportunities to make a difference. You'll know what to do but to do it well, you'll need to understand the values of your workplace culture. Deciphering the unspoken culture Every organization has its own unique culture, a set of values and standards that govern daily behavior and decision making. But as every careful observer of an organization recognizes, the explicit culture is rarely the actual culture. Several studies have pointed to an inconsistency between the publicly stated organizational values and what employees believe to be their true values. This inconsistency means that employees must interpret the real culture in order to be successful. Impact player are active interpreters of the culture, they read the signs on the wall and observe behavior in the organization. They pay less attention to what people say and more attention to what people actually do. They observe and ask questions, what kinds of achievements are praised? What kinds of people have the most power and why? What are the reasons for the fastest dismissals? By noticing what people value, they learn how to add value. By adding value, they increase their influence. The ability to read and adapt to an organization's culture is more important than you think. New research shows that cultural compliance may be a hallmark of the most successful employees. Researchers at Stanford University found that employees who could explain and adapt to cultural changes were more successful over the long term than those who were highly culturally compliant from the start. While many companies look for people who fit their culture, and may overlook non-traditional candidates, it turns out that the ability to decipher cultural codes and observe the environment is more important than coming from the right background. In a rapidly changing environment, the most effective professionals are those who can be thrown into a new context, decipher the unwritten rules of operation, and adapt to the game changes that will earn them the power to rewrite the rules. Upward Empathy In addition to knowing what people in their organization value, Impact players know what their leader value and make it important to them. Evan Hong is the director of the Enterprise Risk Team at Target Corporation, a $92 billion U.S. retailer that specializes in predicting and helping to mitigate operational risk. What makes Evan Hong so valuable is his ability to see things through other people's eyes. He notices how I learn and what my preferences are, says his manager, Aileen Guinea. He'll ask straightforward questions like, are you getting what you need? It makes me stop and think about what I really need and whether I'm getting it or not. Evan Hong doesn't just know what his boss needs from him, he knows everything Guinea cares about. He asked Guinea what his boss, Senior President Matt, valued most, how much time did he spend discussing each issue with Matt? How does he help with those issues? It's really nice to have someone to help me think through what might be going on, says Guinea. When Guinea prepares an annual risk management report for the company's senior executives, Evan helps him prepare it and gives him all the information he needs. Then he made a bold request, could he attend the meeting? He admitted that at his position he would not normally be included as an attendee at a senior executive meeting, but he suggested that if he and Guinea presented together, one of them could focus on the negative aspects of the risk and the other on the positive, thus facilitating a more comprehensive discussion. Rather than push the idea, he suggested it in advance to give him plenty of time to think about it. 
Guinea saw that a joint presentation would yield better results, and he had full confidence in Evan's ability to represent both of them, plus they worked well together, so he asked him to join him. He did his job perfectly, and they briefed the executive team on the various threats to the operation, including the possibility of a recession. They identified the company's weaknesses and protections and facilitated a lively discussion. It may have been a record for any company, members of the executive team said after the meeting that they were looking forward to next year's risk management meeting. The conference was more than a superficial success, it was held in 2019, and it was an important preparation for the economic setbacks that would follow as a result of the new global crown epidemic. Rather than just doing his job, Evan Hong went a step further to understand the work of his boss and his boss's boss, and the fundamental tasks he needed to accomplish, all to ensure the company was prepared for risk. Impact player understand the needs of their leaders and are excellent practitioners of what I call upward empathy, a tendency to observe their managers and see not only their demanding bosses, but also their bosses' challenges, limitations, and good intentions. Upward empathy is the ability to move beyond your frustration with your boss to understanding your boss's frustration, especially if you are the source of that frustration. The ability to empathize upward can be enhanced by perspective taking, the ability to take other people's perspectives into account. Perspective taking is much like its close cousin, empathy, but practiced with the head rather than the heart. The concept is to get up from our seats and see the situation from the point of view of others at the table. For example, as one of the junior consultants on a project team, we may see our boss making a series of urgent requests. However, from the boss's point of view, we see a difficult client suddenly changing the scope of the project. From that client's point of view, we see an unexpected internal organizational adjustment that creates a multitude of new relationships and users. As we practice perspective taking and upward empathy, we gradually develop a deeper understanding of what leaders and stakeholders see, think, and feel. This awareness then guides our actions. Researchers have shown that perspective taking occurs naturally when we are at the lower end of the power scale. The less power and resources we have, the more integrated we become with the people and events around us. However, increased power reduces the likelihood that we will try to understand other people's perspectives. Unlike riding a bicycle, this is something we may forget how to do, and this explains why senior executives and politicians often seem to be out of touch with the grassroots. It also means that as we advance in our careers, we need to be proactive in retaining the ability to bring perspectives to the table. There is a reward for those who can do this, by practicing upward empathy, we open up the channels through which senior leaders can more easily see our intentions, and we develop a common language for discussing those intentions that can be mutually beneficial. Seeing the Agenda Perspective taking also helps us see the intangible goals that guide our actions. Most leaders and organizations have an agenda, a set of issues or goals that they care about. Sometimes these agendas are expressed explicitly in mission statements, strategic initiatives, or priorities for a particular period of time. But in a dynamic environment, where tactical goals need to be adjusted as conditions change and new information emerges, this means that the stated agenda is rarely the true agenda. The real agenda is what is important at the moment, and it defines what is critical and essential to success. But the real agenda is rarely written in black and white. Ideally, leaders would communicate their agenda clearly, let you know what's important and why, and then let you figure out how to achieve it. But often leaders are so fast-paced that they can't take the time to slow down and communicate it to their team. Or because they know the agenda so well, they mistakenly assume everyone else does too. The corporate world has taught me not to wait for instructions to come to me automatically. The reality is that players at all levels have to figure out the current agenda of the organization for themselves, a pattern of behavior that can be seen in high-impact players. The top players in our study intuitively knew the real agenda, like good defensive players who read the field and anticipate immediate action, they knew what the next move might be and stepped into their place. They know what I call WIN. What's important now? Do you know what's important now? 
Do you understand your organization's priorities? Do your leaders and colleagues say you know it all, meaning you can talk about strategy easily? More importantly, do you know what is absolutely important right now? If not, pay attention to what your leaders are spending time on, what's being talked about often, what's being progressed, and what's being praised the most. That's the agenda. That is the WIN. By examining what many leaders observe and think about their impact player, this book allows us to understand what kind of employees these leaders need, and what kind of employees are contributing, valuable players of the team. The authors emphasize that this is not a comparison of winners and losers, that high-impact players are categorized by their approach to work, and that it's not a winner-take-all contest. It's not about working harder, it's about working more purposefully. High-impact players are more focused and avoid work depletion. This book has opened our eyes to another possibility of doing better in the workplace that make you know where you should go effectively.